Maybe. Oh, oh it's recording. We have technology. Okay. <laughs> All righty now. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to our, our uh, session tonight, hosted by Harmony Pack, my wonderful membership community. And I am excited tonight to share some of the pictures that I took on our recent amazing adventure to Kenya. So, um, and my, um, my dear friend Kathy's here. Kathy was our official uh, professional photographer on the trip. So she has extraordinary photos that I haven't even had a chance to look at yet. But um, I know her work. So these are gonna be, just so you know, these are from my phone, <laughs> which, which actually did a pretty decent job. But yeah. for those incredible, um, you know, I will share at some point, Kathy and I will discuss some of their extraordinary close-ups and, you know, versions of, of the pictures you'll see tonight uh, that are um, done with a beautiful lens and a beautiful camera. But this is going to be fun because it'll give you an overview of the trip and uh, give you a taste of the encounters that we had. So without further ado, I am going to mute everybody. And, okay, and then I am going to share our screen. Let me just say speaker view, and then we're going to share the screen. Okay. All righty. Uh, can everybody see the picture of the, the zebras? Yes. Just, just give me a thumbs up. Okay, awesome. Okay. Um, now, this, I'm starting with this picture because we started our trip outside of Nairobi, and um, there is a reserve right outside of Nairobi, a park. So what you see in the background is the city, which I think is amazing, um, because of course very soon you'll see that we are out, you know, on the Ma the Maasai Mara and Baseli. There is not a building, not a you know, not no sign of, of, of civilization for miles and miles and miles, except for roads. So this is a fascinating juxtaposition of this reserve that it again just is right outside of the bustling metropolis of Nairobi. So um, this is uh, our first encounters. Okay, next. <laughs> okay, that's a good start. Try this. Oh, now slow down, slow down, whoa. Hold on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, a couple more zebra shots, and then this, of course, is a crocodile. We, this guy is tiny <laughs> compared to some that we saw. We saw some, I mean, they had to be, what, Kathy, 25 feet long? I mean, they're, you know, at least from nose to tail, they were just gigantic. And um, as you can see, they lie very quietly in the mud and the birds move all around them and the, the zebras were very close and nothing happens until they want it to. And when it does, it happens like lightning. Fortunately, we didn't see that, but I just love this, what I thought was a large crocodile until I saw others. But there he is basking in the shallow water. This of course is a beautiful blue heron that I did this very clever thing with my phone. Don't know how I did it, but <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Moving great blue heron. And these are some of the birds that we saw a lot of. This is a sacred ibis, and behind the ibis is a, uh, a beautiful Egyptian goose. And Egyptian geese, uh, you can actually see amazing renderings of them on the, on the um, tomb, and uh, you know, in the Egyptian temples and tombs. Um, so they were, um, they were hunted by the Egyptians, but I think also probably raised. So they're kind of like our Canadian geese in North America. They're, they are uh, fairly ubiquitous, but they're just beautiful. More zebras. And again, this is right outside the window of the car. So that's part of the reason I wanted you to see how close we were in different times. Uh, these are uh, hard beasts. Um, they are uh, one of the smaller antelopes. And you, what you see here that I love is lots of little ones. Uh, one of the most rewarding things on the trip was how many babies of all species that we saw, which was just so wonderful because that means there's plentiful grass, there's plentiful game for the predators, um, everybody is was thriving. So that was a very happy thing. 
This is a male ostrich. Um, the male ostriches have the black and white. And you see how big he is compared to the zebra. Um, and the female ostriches are gray. So it's really easy to tell them apart. And they are, they are quite a bit smaller. Um, these are the, the, the famous Cape Buffalo. And I love this shot because once again, we were really close. And here's a little baby um, sitting with mama and a couple other Cape Buffaloes. Cape Buffaloes have a reputation of being very grouchy and uh, can be very aggressive. But these guys were very happy to just hang out, look like cows, <laughs> but they don't always act like cows. <laughs> so here they are. And, and it's really interesting in Cape Buffalo. Every single Cape Buffalo's horns are unique. So this one has, you know, they're very, uh, they're separated um, and far apart, almost like a cow's, whereas others can be very tight to the head and curved more. So, and then uh, the morning after we did that little game drive, we then went to the giraffe sanctuary. And this is a very special place. These are Rothschild giraffes and you can tell the Rothschild, because it looks like they have like white knee socks on. And they were very, very threatened. And a couple um, was, I think, 30 years ago, a couple uh, brought two giraffes to this refuge they created. And the, they have been breeding ever since. And then the, they've been able to return many of the giraffes uh, because they can only have room for 13. So when they get to that magic number, they, um, they return some to the wild, but they're, they're returned to protection. So, um, so these guys are coming to us because they get a treat. <laughs> so there's Kathy, and this is one of the lovely, I don't remember if it was Daisy or Stacy, um, coming for a treat. You can see our friend Tamar up above taking a picture, um, and a warthog looking for uh, any droppage, any spillage. <laughs> always opportunists, um, but this was, this is a lovely, if there aren't too many people around, it can be a very special connection with these giraffes who very delicately take a, it's a pellet, it's not sugar, it's, it's a, actually a nutritious treat that, um, that they are, uh, and look at that tongue. <laughs> you can see how they, and that's just about maybe a third of the tongue. They're very long, but they use their, their lips very, very carefully and very gently. And this is a female giraffe. Male giraffes have five horns, we learned, which I did not know. I think that's quite extraordinary. I don't know if I have a picture of Eddie. I don't think I do. And so uh, Eddie, the male giraffe, was there. He had just humongous head. So then after we, we visited the um, giraffes, of course, we went to the Sheldrick Trust. So this, of course, is one of the baby orphans coming for his milk bottle. And you'll see all this red dirt around. This elephant should normally be gray, <laughs> which you'll see in Amboseli that they're actually gray, like you think of elephants being. But because of all this wonderful red earth and the mud and the mud puddles, they are uh, this wonderful brown color. So this, these are the babies that come in the morning. They come running down to be fed and um, play in the water. And you can see all the people around. So this little one's drinking on her own. And um, here's, a, here's a group playing in the mud. And the guys in the green jackets, the coats, are their keepers. And the keepers are these extraordinary men who are with the elephants 24 seven. They, and every keeper, uh, the keepers actually sleep in the, in the stalls with the orphans. They have a little bunk bed and they sleep in the stalls because the orphans need to know that there's somebody next to them with them uh, all the time. Um, because it's critical to their sense of safety and security. And they rotate the guys around so that the elephants don't get to attach to one keeper, which is very important. So uh, this is just fun in the mud. <laughs> you can see this is later in the evening. I think this will play. After they've been out all day, after their morning breakfast, they, are, they come back to the stockade for bedtime, for their nighttime snack and bedtime. So let me see if I can play this just cute video of them um, running back in. Let's see if that'll play. Maybe it won't, but anyway, you can, you can imagine. They come running down the track here and, whoops, okay, so we're not gonna, this is Kiasa. Now Kiasa, whoop, 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 stop it. Kiasa is a very special baby. Kathy and I actually fostered her, sorry, let's hold it there. 
Kathy and I fostered this a little bit. You see the bunk? You can see the bunk where the guy sleeps. Um, he also had an extraordinary um, start in life. She lost her mother perhaps to drought, but she was adopted by two massive, huge male bull elephants. And that was how it was reported to the trust that this little tiny baby was being escorted and protected by these two bulls, which I thought was absolutely extraordinary. And I figured this must be a very special little girl. But she has a reputation at the trust for being very feisty and quite troublesome when she wants to be and will work and try to get everybody's milk. <laughs> However, that was, that was the story from, you know, once she got going, but then she has kind of adopted another little one and she's being a little bit of a better role model to this new little one. So they, again, these elephants form incredible relationships with each other. And just like children, they get along sometimes and not others. She is eating these very important uh, sticks that are, that are full of nutrients that supplement their diet until again, they're out on, in the wild. So actually the milk is the supplement um, and those pellets are the supplement. But this, this bush is very important for different minerals and vitamins. Uh, so they're all fed this and you'll see more of these twigs later. But this is our little Kiasa. And you can see she's starting to get a trunk, a little tusk there. So Kathy and I love to find out what she's up to. Now this is a picture of us landing. So we flew from Nairobi to uh, the Masai Mara. And this is us landing in the middle of the Masai Mara. And with, on our first drive back to where we're gonna be staying in the Mara River Camp, we saw these, this group of elephants snoozing under a tree. It was you know, quite warm and they were all happily snoozing. You can see the size of the tusk on that guy. Now this is the Mara River. The Mara River is the lifeline of the Masai Mara and our beautiful lodge was right here. I'm taking this from the deck right there on the Mara, just on the Mara River, just beautiful. And we could hear hippos, lots of birds, of course. It was just beautiful. And the next day we went out to, um, you know, start our game drive. And we uh, came across this lovely group of, um, and of course, as you know, the, the herds are mostly female with, with youngsters um, occasionally there'll be a bull with the, with the females, with the, with the, with the family, but not, not very often. It'll be led by the mother, the grandmother matriarch or the mother matriarch. But, uh, once again, there were lots of sweet babies. So we were very excited about that. And just a little better shot of a little one. Different group. And you can see these guys are gray because <laughs> they're not so muddy. That's a sweet shot. I love that with the, the mom and baby. And also, um, I think on that very first day as we were coming out, we, we came across these two beautiful, uh, these are Maasai giraffes. And the difference is that their legs, let me see if I can show you in the next picture. This is a male and a female. There you go. You can see that they have color all the way down their legs. And I think also their tails, they have longer, uh, I don't know what you call it, longer hair on their tails than the Rothschild giraffe, and they're much more common. But these two, this, this beautiful pair, just kind of hung with us there, and we got to take lots of pictures. They're just so lovely. And this is an eland, and you're gonna get a chance to see an eland up close. The most, this is the largest antelope in uh, Kenya. It is called the, I'm, the, I'm, the this is, um, I'm, yeah, this is uh, the largest uh, antelope in Kenya, and they're just exquisitely beautiful. So this is a male, and you can see those wonderful curly horns and the beautiful markings on him. We saw quite a few this year. We didn't see very many last year. This is a toppy. Toppy is another type of antelope and we're gonna come on another toppy soon. But these colorings are so unique. The charcoal gray and that beautiful red. Um, and this is another antelope. This was a old bull elk. I mean elk, old bull elephant. And, um, I mean, look at him. I mean, he's wrinkly. He's, you know, there's some, you know, cuts out of his ears. And we got very close to him. And in fact, I think Kathy has a picture of us in one truck taking a picture of him um, as they were uh, on the other side of him. But he was just so calm, very peaceful presence. Obviously, he didn't need to worry about anybody. But he was probably the oldest elephant I think we saw. Don't know how old he was, but he was, he was quite elderly. There he is walking 
between the two trucks. So you can see our truck that I'm taking a picture from, and I think Kathy is in the other truck. So that's just another shot of him. And he had quite a, quite a chunk out of this ear on the right. And this, of course, was a group uh, walking, uh, walking across our road. And I was sort of hoping that I could get these to play. There we go. Oh, yay! So you get a sense of the sweet movement, you know, eating, eating. They walk for 18 miles every day. And they're always stopping to look at this little one. <laughs> always eating. Okay, so I just wanted you to have a sense of, you know, their movement and, and how they how they amble every day. I took a picture of this, sorry. I took a picture of this um, because this was a, this was a film crew out filming on the, the Mara River to try and catch a massive crossing. We were kind of after most of the big crossings of the zebras and the wildebeest, and, but these guys were out to, uh, and, and this was a ma massive camera on a swivel, but I just thought it was really cool. <laughs> so I wanted you to, so this is how they get those amazing shots, National Geographic and, you know, those in, the shows. They have, a, they have a land cruiser with this amazing camera mounted on it that swivels, you know, 180 degrees. So they can move and follow and do all kinds of cool stuff. So that was kind of fun. And this is the river. And I think what I did here is, so I can get it. Come back. This is a major crossing right here. You can see from the dirt that a lot of critters have come across here. So beautiful. And here's a bunch of hippos in the river. We saw lots of hippos in the river, which was very fun. Oh, go ahead. Listen, see if they grunt again. They have that, they, they make it. See here, listen to that. It's like a, a low laugh, and sometimes it's really loud. Listen again. <laughs> okay, so um, as again, we were, we were on our game drive. And our driver brought us to this amazing scene. This is a lioness, and she's looking a little perturbed right now. And the reason is, there's a male lion right here, and underneath his chin, what we didn't see at first was uh, a newly killed um, warthog. And he was kind of growling at her, and she was sitting there looking at him going, really? Because of course, she and her sister killed that warthog, and he took it. So she was not too thrilled, <laughs> but uh, you know she knows that this is what he does. And uh, there he is. He was beautiful. And uh, not the greatest focus, but there's her kind of uh, really <laughs> look. He really had to take that, huh? Because we found out she had other plans for that. As she looked off in the distance. We learned from our driver that she was looking out for her five cubs. Mm -hmm. And here they are, and I don't think this is my video, but um, they're five what we might call, uh, I don't know if they're adolescents, I would say sort of middle school cubs. And they're watching a monitor lizard. Who looks really fascinating. No, you go. No, oh, you go. No, I think, I think you should go, really. You're, you're the oldest. You go check it out. I don't know. I don't think mom would be too thrilled. Oh, come on. <laughs> I think we should look. I do. I do. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe not. Yeah, I'm kind of curious. <laughs> huh? 
And we were thinking, please don't mess with that monitor lizard because he will not, he will bite you and it won't be nice. There he is, you can see him in the corner, the monitor lizard. Like, oh honey, mama would not be pleased if you tangled with that. <laughs> Unfortunately, they didn't. Just curious. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> so meanwhile, mama is walking back to them, which from, from quite a distance actually. She was uh, walking back. But look at them, are they not, darling? Obviously they're pretty well fed, which is really good, right? No skinny, no skinny kittens there. <laughs> so we were pleased that they were not starving. So that was fun. Now this is an extraordinary antelope whose name I forgot to look up. Kathy, do you know what that is? If you do, can you, you want to unmute? Isn't he I'm absolutely sure stunning? I think it might be an oryx. An oryx, yes, thank you. Isn't yep. that gorgeous? That's an oryx, you guys. Absolutely magnificent. Thanks, Kath. <laughs> And then the next morning, or you know, sometime in the morning, we um, we had an amazing balloon ride. So obviously, I'm taking a different balloon picture from our balloon. These are some of us just moving, and you can see the planes where the animals are, and how exciting it is to really fly over and watch the watch them. There's the sunrise. And that's that. You know, of course, in a balloon, you can drop down lower, go up higher. So these are wildebeest primarily, but a lot of zebras too in there. There's another picture. That's our friend Beth. I think that's Joni in the purple there. And another beautiful view of the balloons in the morning over the Mara. Here we go. So you get a sense of we were moving over them and. They'd look at us like, oh my gosh, what's that? Once again, you can see a little baby wildebeest there, a little calf. Wildebeests are so interesting. They are so strange looking. <laughs> they're so strange looking, they're almost cute. This is the Mara River. Isn't that exquisite? Look, you can see for miles and miles. You can see some camps, which are the different lodges below. But otherwise, I just love that huge open space. It's just Something about it is just magical. The land is, is really magical. And afterwards, we come down from the balloon and we have this absolutely gorgeous breakfast uh, catered to us uh, with champagne and orange juice and you know your, your customized omelets and just amazing. There they are, these are the guys doing all the cooking. They bring it all in and cook up there on the hill. And uh, these were our breakfast companions. <laughs> So it's a very special experience. Now this is kind of fun because after breakfast, we took another game drive. And these are hyenas. And this one, we'll see her again. This I believe is a male, I think, not sure. Yep. And they're all uniquely marked. And the other one, this was in the, that was the male, isn't he beautiful? And this is the female, and look at her, she's really pregnant. So um, she may have been the matriarch of the group. There were, I think, three or four, right, Kath? I think there were, yeah, there wasn't a huge troop, but she's obviously gonna add to the pack. But it's fascinating because, look, they're hanging out right there with the zebras. And, and one of the most fascinating things is, that the predators will often hang out with the prey and nothing happens. Only happens when they're hungry. And so, but the tricky part is of course, things can change in a heartbeat. You know, that the, 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 um, the hyena can just, you know, easily go after somebody, especially when they're that close. And hyenas have very, very powerful jaws and they can break a leg very quickly and easily. Although again, they're a little bit more scavengers than hunters. They'll let the lions or the cheetahs do all the work, and then they'll come in and grab the prey. But obviously this guy's pretty well fed, so he must have had a meal recently too. Now this is really special. We came upon 
a toppy who had just given birth. This baby is getting up for the very first time. We were privileged to watch him and watch her. I mean, she gave birth like right on the road. Um, she even has the afterbirth coming out of her, of her um, back end there. But this little guy was gonna get up. It just took him some time. <laughs> We're all cheering for him quietly, quietly, because of course, you know, the last thing we wanna do is spook the mom or upset them because those hyenas are very close. And so eventually the little guy got up. I just wanted to reassure you, he did get up and he, and she, it was fascinating. We watched her move away from him to encourage him to get up and move. But it takes about 15 minutes from birth for them to be up and moving. It's extraordinary. So what an honor and privilege to watch him take his first steps. Mary is again, that might've been, look, look at those legs. Oh boy. Oh boy, baby. <laughs> whoops, whoops. Looking him. Working on getting to drink. Whoops, kind of overshot. He's right there though, encouraging him, touching him. So precious. And then, come on, kid. Come on. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. Here he comes. Oh, 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 oh. oh. But he's okay. Yay, he's okay. But we stayed enough to know that he was on his feet and with her and was going to be okay. So precious. There, yep, yep. <laughs> Wants him moving. Oh, honey. But he's okay. They're amazingly, amazingly resilient and sturdy. So that's that was the privilege we got to see. Now, this is a bit of a change of scenery. This is the bar at our beautiful camp um, on the Mara, the Mara River Camp. And these little vervet monkeys get into everything. As you can see, he's thinking about what in the bar he can raise. <laughs> And this is the view from um, my tent uh, at the Mara. We all had these, you know, beautiful tents. Let's see, I think I have a picture of the tent. There it is. This sleeps too, has its own bathroom, the permanent tent. And they're just so cozy. And at night, because it got very cool, they would put a, a hot water bottle covered in fleece in our beds. And everything gets zipped up at night, all the windows, all the doors. Um, but it's just so beautiful and cozy. And so this again is the view looking out at the river. And I was, I, one morning I, I, or one afternoon when some of the folks were going to the village, I did some yoga right here and had the privilege of being surrounded by the vervet monkeys um, who just kind of hung out with me. This is a little male, big male actually, um, who was hanging out with me and, you know, eating things he could find. And I, they're just amazing. Charming, funny. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> beautiful coats, just beautiful coats. And extraordinary bright blue balls. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see that, but mm -hmm. they're quite amazing. He certainly knows how to charm the ladies. Beautiful guy. So this is, um, you saw the bar uh, with the monkey. That's the back. If you look at the green there, that's the bar. And this is, it's beautiful and it's open. And um, to the left, to my, uh, to the left of the picture where you see the zebra, there's a fireplace and a couch. And we would sit there and have a, a drink at the end of the day and talk and chat and compare things and so and then to the to behind me is the dining area um and they just it was such a peaceful lovely place um i just this was my favorite place um while we were there it was so special and they, there weren't a lot of people there it was our group and a few other couples really so just wonderful and this we were actually leaving the mara and passing through a different part so this is not a Maasai village, this is a different village, but it was so interesting to see the difference from the low mud huts to these little conical uh, thatched roofs of a different um, tribe. And then you see all the cactus that they actually cultivate into fences. 
which is very clever. Whereas the Maasai use the, the very sharp thorn bushes to protect their villages. And I don't have, a, I don't have any actually pictures of Maasai village. This was the next place we went to on the beautiful Lake Navasha. This is called Kaibu. Um, and you can see these beautiful uh, um, buildings. And they housed, I think, four separate rooms, Kathy, two above and two below, I think. And um, then there's this big, beautiful open area and a fenced area here where um, uh, the, the lake is just right on the other side. So you can see more of the, of the houses. There's Kathy, <laughs> so you can get the sense of the size of these. Okay, so this is where we stayed just one night uh, because we were going to go out on Lake Navasha. But while we were there behind the fence, there were also some giraffes. I think, yeah, it was getting very dim. The light was getting very dim. You can see the lake in the background, but these giraffes just come and, you know, hang out there and move around. The wildlife is all around us. This was a treat. This is a serval. A little cat, a little hunting, a little cat that apparently jumps very high and can catch birds very, um, by, you know, by jumping. But just a beautiful little cat. That was a treat to see one of those because it's rare to see them. Now this, of course, this is an elephant with a water line because we are in Ambicelli, uh, which has a very marshy, marshy area. And here you can see the elephants are gray and they spend a lot of time in the marsh hence the water line. And they're bigger here because there's so much water and grass. And you can see the grass and the swampy area behind him. But I just love that, so you can see the water line. And then here are some more, I guess this is, let me, let me see. There's Kilimanjaro in the background, not a great shot of it. Here we go. They watch them with their trunks as they grab the grass. Grab the grass mostly on the move. And the egrets, lots of egrets, the birds, the white birds. There's a big tusker. Okay. Just zebras and elephants. Sunset with the wildebeests in the, in the foreground. Beautiful sunset. This, again, right outside of our, um, our place at, um, I'm sorry, this is Kaibo Lodge, not, not the one on, on Lake Navasha. Um, and that's Kilimanjaro, which is actually in Tanzania. But that, um, uh, the mountain was kind of hidden a lot of the time, but this was uh, when it was not. It's just, just stunning, ma magical mountain. Not a lot of snow on the top, which of course is related to climate change. These were two guys that were sparring and sh testing their skills. And uh, it was very interesting to watch them kind of push and pull and, you know, practice um, exerting themselves. <laughs> and this, of course, is a hippo munching the grass. And that shows you how, how deep and lush it is with the egrets, you know, even landing on his back, not, not to care. But uh, hippo's very happy in the marsh. There he is again. That I loved because there's two birds on it. <laughs> this is another uh, type of ibis, it's gonna be beautiful. Again, right outside the car door and the sacred ibis again, which again, you see in Egyptian, very important in Egyptian culture, the ibis. Flamingos, that was fun. We got to, uh, we went to this lake, these two lake areas where there were lots of birds and we got to see some flamingos. Again, see how deep it is? They're, they're really up to their tummies in the water and very happy to be there. Because the rest of Amboseli is very dry, very dry and dusty, really dry and dusty. This is kind of a fun, iconic shot of all bunch of critters. So we've got giraffes, wildebeests, antelope or impala, probably zebras in the distance. And these giraffes were moving pretty rapidly, <laughs> crossing in front of us. Another evening shot of Kilimanjaro, the other was morning. 
sunset. And this is a watering hole that was created. Now we are uh, in Savo East. Um, and um, I think that's a big lodge in the very background there. We just started our tour and came across this watering hole with this wonderful family enjoying the water and each other. And we then saw quite a few of these water holes that they've created in Savo because it has been so dry. And see how dry that is. Now this, of course, thrilled me to pieces because I'm in this little area, you can see the water here, there was a cheetah, a young male. He still has a little bit of fuzz on his back, but he hung out with, I mean, my gosh, Kath, what were there, eight trucks, eight? You know, everybody clicking away, and he hung out for the longest time. And it was magical for me because I adore these cats. There's something very special about cheetahs for me. And look how elegant he is. Look how beautiful. Oh, oh, <laughs> just, they grabbed me. There he is. Oh. So I got to see him and, and he, did, he did bend down and have some water at one point. It was lovely. This is just a beautiful sky shot. I just, I just love the clouds and the mountains just to give you a sense of the, the land and the space too. Now this, we, this was early, this was first thing in the morning and we saw this group of elephants walking across the road and we just started filming. And then this one I'm really excited to share with you because I want you to watch what happens here. Oops. And listen, and listen. This was one of the most special moments on the trip, I thought. This baby, you guys, is about a week old, according to our guide. Oh. Watch her touch him and reassure him. Keep him connecting to her, touching her. Big hill there, buddy. as the other one waited for her and the little one. So, very special. Yay. <laughs> I just, oh, so magical. 
teeny tiny little guy. Our guide had said he never saw one that young before. There they go. So that is some of the magic that we see on these trips. Um, just, I mean, you know, your heart just opens wide and you, you can connect and feel that affection and constant um, connection the mama feel is, is, has with that little one. She's constantly present with him um, and reassuring. And that's why it's so important for those babies when they're orphaned to have tons of contact with humans, you know, at the trust and, and reassurance and love and care. Touch is so important to them. This picture, which is not fabulous, but I, this bird is quite large and it's called a Cory bastard <laughs> because um, it makes a terrible noise apparently. So uh, it earned that name from, I guess, the British, right? <laughs> so um, he's quite actually very handsome, but he's, he's a, a corny bastard. This is a dick dick. These are little tiny, tiny deer, or antelope, excuse me, um, gazelles, I'm sorry. Antelope are the big ones. Gazelles, there's a bunch of different gazelles, starting from the tiniest, the dick dick, which really looks like the, it really looks kind of like an Italian greyhound. They're very tiny and just precious. And we did see quite a few of them. This was the best picture that I got. But they're darling, and uh, usually there's a group of them. Big eyes. Now this I wanted to share, and I know I wanted, um, this is a courting between two birds. And I'll just play a little of it. But I thought this was magical. And this went on. And on, and it was just beautiful. And our guide, who's a very good birder, wasn't quite sure what these guys were. Okay, now this is, there's a very uh, challenging Dutch word for these guys, but they're also known more commonly as giraffe-necked gazelles, as you can see. And when they feed, they stand up on their hind legs and feed in the trees. But look at that neck. Isn't that an amazing creature? So beautiful, so graceful, but they stand up to eat. <laughs> just wild. And they just stand on those hind legs and reach up. <clears throat> More zebras, as you can see, getting, um, I love this because Joni made a comment when we were back with the zebras in the red mud. She said, oh, the zebras are orange and black and, <laughs> and in this area, and that's, <laughs> yes, they, between all that wonderful rolling in the dirt, um, they, they definitely get uh, more orange and black than black and white. And this is where we stayed. Uh, this is called the Voy Lodge, and this is quite an expansive and beautiful place um, that has these amazing watering holes uh, that they built there. And here you can see um, this bull uh, elephant at one of the watering holes. <laughs> this guy, I think, is the guy that, um, I'll just move on a little bit. But, yeah. These are baboons running all around. <laughs> yes, baby. Okay, just wait. wait. That's the other watering hole where I think there's Impala. <clears throat> so this is, he's at the smaller hole which you're gonna see in some other pictures too. <coughs> Look at him, wow. And this is really, this is how close he is. This is one of our gals on our trip to Utah Tip, and I just wanted you to see how close this water hole is to the dining room in the bar right here. This guy, I love this. He's resting his trunk on his, on his, trunk on his uh, uh, tusk. <laughs> How handy. If you have a really long trunk to have a nice tusk to rest in. <laughs> this is Kathy and Joni. We are back at the Shoulder Trust. This is the boy integration unit where the a little bit older elephants go to spend more time out in the bush with um, where they are going to run into wild elephants, but also 
graduates from the program who are now wild, but who also know where the, if the babies uh, get out there and think they want to spend the night out with the wild ones and get scared, the older ones will bring them back to the boy reintegration unit. So, so precious. And these are the giant milk bottles. That's a normal milk carton, you know, that they're sitting in. And here, here you can see how big those are. And these are getting prepared for the gang who is going to be coming fast and furious. Um. <laughs> Here's flapping. Yeah, my picture gets a little squirrely here, sorry. <laughs> but they come at quite a run to get their milk bottles. <laughs> Oops, sorry guys. <laughs> okay. Um. And this is what they're coming for, it is their milk bottles. I think this one will get some slurping. <laughs> and these guys are bigger, sometimes they get two. Yep. Hear the slurping? <laughs> Now this guy was holding his own bottle, which is so cute. Just holding his own bottle and slurping away. Here he is. I can do it. I got this. <laughs> Isn't that fun? And then you, then they get after they've had their bottles, they go to their this enclosure. And there's different hay, and then you'll see some of those sticks on the ground. And they get some pellets. And we are just right here on the other side of this bar. So that, um, you know, we can pet them. You know, we can rub their heads and rub their ears. And they can, those are the pellets on the floor. And they can connect with us if they want to, you know, check us out with their trunks. I just love that. That's just a very sweet picture. The littlest one is Emolian. I can't remember who the bigger one is. And this is one of the keepers explaining different, you know, things that are happening. You see that big fence? That's actually to keep the predators out. <clears throat> and they're working on their sticks there. So these are some of the bigger guys. And you can see that the enclosure is protected by wire. Now, this is another eland. And this eland was, is a wild eland. And he was rescued as a baby. And he comes back on his own to visit and to get a meal. And he is the most extraordinary creature. He gets to come and go as he wants, but at night, if he wants, if he's staying, they put him in here to be sure that he's safe for the night. But he is free to go whenever he wants, so he does. He comes and goes. And um, there's again, that's Tamar with one of the elephants um, uh, who loves to connect with people, and she's breathing into his no his trunk, and he's breathing into her nose, and they're sharing a breath. And one of our keepers told us last year, one of the keepers told us last year that once an elephant has shared the breath with you, they always remember you. And Tamar actually met him, this little guy last year. And, and uh, so he is, was very interested in reconnecting with her. It was very sweet. And this is Beth getting to share the, the breath. Now this is back at the, at the uh, lodge at night. They illuminate the watering holes at night. And this family of elephants came in. And look at the reflections. This is just so beautiful um, as they came in to drink. I did this again. I did this by accident. I don't know how I do that. <laughs> <clears throat> then we retreated to another uh, breakfast in the bush uh, the next morning. So they, they created a beautiful breakfast for us out there. There's Tamar and Beth and Jutatu. And this, I was able to get this lovely shot of a baby baboon and his mom. There he is. <laughs> I know Kathy's got some great ones. And this guy's just, you know, once again, we're just driving and we come across these the elephants in the bush doing their thing. And I apologize, I did not look up the name of this river. Kathy, do you remember the name of the big river? Okay. I, I apologize, you guys. I t intended to do that and had a bunch of 
glitches in the past couple of weeks. But this river is uh, was very, very low. It's a massive river. And it was so low, you know, just we saw most of uh, mostly riverbed. Um, but when it is full, it is a raging torrent that is very wide. And this was it in its very, you know, dry stages. But it, even then it was quite magnificent. You can see how it's carved, carved the rocks and stuff. It was just beautiful. And this is some of the striations in the rock. I just thought that was incredible in the riverbed. And this, <laughs> this again is in, in Savo, and these are some of those watering holes they created, and how much the elephants love these. Just love these. And sorry for the wind, but oh, so happy. So happy. Whoops. <laughs> I'll drown getting out. <laughs> oh, okay. Got it. Now, this one, again, you can see that there's sort of a like little stream that they've created there. Um, and throwing the, you know, water and the mud, getting a nice bath. While some are under the tree over there, there's not a lot of shade, as you can see. So that water feels so good. And this is, I think, one of my favorites. And actually, I put this on my YouTube channel. If you guys might have seen this on the YouTube channel. If you haven't been to my YouTube channel, it's Kinship with Animals. Please watch. I have all kinds of wonderful messages to share. And I love this video because um, you'll see in a minute, um, one of the elephants just getting a really good butt scratch. <laughs> Meanwhile, playing around, having a ball, loving the water. Oh, oh, just going against the bank. Okay, here comes the butt scratching. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Meanwhile, the little one is like trying to submerge himself entirely. <laughs> Oh, the best. Oh. <laughs> and actually the one in the back is rubbing up against this, what's left of a tree there. And their, their skin is, is very, very thick. So it takes a lot of rubbing. <laughs> it definitely takes a lot of rubbing to get that itch scratched. There's another gorgeous one of the one of that group kind of giving us the, the hairy eyeball going, okay, that's enough. You guys can move on now. And this again is back at the boy. And uh, this is how close we are, and everybody gets to rub heads and, and visit with them. And they get a little pushy with each other sometimes, you know. There's a little bit of shoving, or especially around those pellets that they love. <laughs> But when we were here, it was our group, and then there was a group of five other people. And it was, um, it was just, uh, it's so special to have that time with these guys. So special. I think that's Joni. <laughs> yeah, so just an extraordinary opportunity to be with these little guys. Then we traveled, we were going to, we're on our way now, we're leaving the boy and heading towards Mombasa on the coast. And this is Sisal, or Sisal, where, you know, that the mats are made of and the baskets are made of, and they, they split these fibers, but there were huge fields, and I just thought that was really cool. So you can have a sense of these massive fields, which of course don't need a lot of water. And this is the view from my room at the hotel in Mombasa. So we went from all this dryness to this absolutely beautiful place on the Indian Ocean. I'd never seen the Indian Ocean before. There it is. And I was very uh, excited. That's again from my room, just this beautiful tropical place. That's the Indian Ocean. 
that's my feet in the Indian Ocean. <laughs> I was very excited to get my feet in the ocean. And these, this is in the hotel. So it's got these beautiful atriums and these are all filled with koi, big koi. And there's, there are weaver birds and it was just, that's me with a fresh coconut after I'd had a glorious foot massage. It was a beautiful way to complete the trip with just sort of R&R, &R, lots of moisture, water. It was very beautiful. This was an amazing flower that's just growing there. And this is, we were sitting out uh, having a, a cocktail at the end of the day. This beautiful. This again is another shot from in the courtyard. <clears throat> water running everywhere. And these are the weaver birds. Oops. I didn't stop it. Hold on, sorry. Stop. <laughs> weaver bird. Just amazing and beautiful little yellow birds making these nests. This is the eland again. I I had I was I mean we, we got to be very close to him and he was the most gentle heart and beautiful soul, and I just totally fell in love with him. And he ended up giving my arm quite a bath, <laughs> which I love. <laughs> and this picture, thanks to Kathy, again, I know I'm jumping around a bit, but this is a bush baby. And that was also, he came into the bar. They're about the size of a house cat. I always thought they were tinier, but he's this lovely chocolate brown, and they eat fruit, and they're nocturnal with those big eyes. And so the bartender, would, bring, would feed them fruit on this plate. And you can see his toes. They've got, they've got fingers like monkeys do. They are actually are primates. So they, look how darling, look at that face. We all fell in love with the bush baby. And Kathy got this amazing picture. So I want to thank Kathy for that. Because you know, it was dark, it was very dark. And she didn't want to flash because that would have really, you know, that would have been a mess with his eyes. So she, you got this with your phone, didn't you? <laughs> she did. So. That was an amazing shot. But isn't he just adorable? <laughs> and that's another shot of me with the gorgeous land. I think that's it. Yep, that's back to Nairobi. So thank you guys. Um, you know, we would have we would have been about an hour, but we ran a little over since I had my technical difficulties. But I hope you've enjoyed this and it's given you a sense of Africa, a little of Kenya at least, and the magic of being with the animals and the incredible encounters that can happen, like the baby Toppy, who was just born, and that darling little baby one week old elephant. So precious. So I hope that you all will get a chance to go to Africa. Um, it, is, it is such a magical place. And um, so I hope you will, because I know all of you love animals and, um, and they, you know, they, the conservation is very important to the Kenyans and they do a really good job. Um, and so bless them. So you're, you know, if you're, if you're going there, a lot of your uh, money will support that industry, the tourism industry, which in, of course does support conservation. Um, and there's ways of making your money go further towards conservation, like supporting the Shelter Trust, who not only rescues baby elephants, orphaned elephants, They've just rescued an orphaned, another orphaned rhino. They've rescued giraffes. They've rescued hippos. And all with the intent to return them to the wild. And they educate. They have uh, dogs, uh, uh, anti-poaching dogs, that um, search out ivory and search out poachers. They fund that. They fund education. They fund um, a few different veterinary units that go out into the bush when an animal is reported injured. <clears throat> they actually will send a team out to see if they can help the animals. And, and of course they fly, they have their, their helicopters and their planes, and that's how they bring the baby elephants back from all over the place. 
far, far away. They have a, a veterinary helicopter that, uh, so they can get them on IVs, they can get them stabilized as they fly them back to the trust near Nairobi. So please look, at, look up the Sheltered Wildlife Trust if you haven't already and uh, check out their work because they are, they are such a fabulous organization doing such good work and it's all about partnership and love. So thanks everybody for being with us tonight. It was lovely to see you guys. Thanks for your patience. And uh, please feel free to email um, you know, or call me if you have any questions or interest in going on a trip. Um, but thanks for, again, for being with me tonight and for your patience. So lots of love to everybody. Have a wonderful evening. I'm gonna stop my share here. And just say good night to everybody. Thank you so much. Again, good to see everyone. Good night.